When ULA declared Vulcan Centaur America's most advanced rocket, Elon Musk's response was just a laughing emoji. That single reaction exposed a harsh reality about who's actually leading the space race. While ULA celebrates their traditional approach, SpaceX has landed boosters 500 times, some flying 29 missions each. But there's something deeper happening here that reveals why established aerospace is struggling against the new generation. What does this clash tell us about the future of American space dominance? Let's dive right in. Let's break down exactly how SpaceX exposed ULA's bold claim as nothing more than corporate wishful thinking. When ULA announced Vulcan Centaur as America's most advanced launch system, they highlighted impressive specifications. 27,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, up to six solid rocket boosters, and their innovative ACES upper stage that generates power directly from stored fuel instead of conventional batteries. On paper, these features sound revolutionary. Like advertising the world's most advanced transportation when you've built a really nice horse-drawn carriage. Here's what few people realize. While ULA was perfecting these incremental improvements, SpaceX was rewriting the fundamental rules of spaceflight. Since their first successful booster reflight in 2017, they've achieved what seemed impossible, landing and reusing entire rocket stages. Booster 167 alone has completed 29 flights, each time proving that rockets don't need to be thrown away like expensive fireworks. But here's where ULA's claim becomes genuinely embarrassing. They're still flying Vulcan as a completely expendable rocket. Their CEO talks about maybe recovering just the engines in the future not even the full first stage. It's like claiming you've built the world's most advanced car while your competitor is already flying reusable spacecraft. The engineering reality is stark. SpaceX has mastered landing 15-story buildings, traveling at hypersonic speeds, then refurbishing them for another mission. They've even recovered Falcon Heavy Center cores, heavier, more complex vehicles with reinforced tanks and additional structural supports that make them exponentially harder to land safely. Yet they brought it back intact just minutes after launch, making it look routine. And here's what's truly noteworthy. While ULA uses cold staging, separating stages before upper stage ignition to avoid exhaust damage, SpaceX's Starship employs hot staging, firing engines before separation. This eliminates dead weight faster and improves efficiency. SpaceX has already proven it works in the real world, while ULA sticks to textbook approaches. The most damning comparison? ULA's Vulcan relies heavily on technologies inherited from Atlas V and Delta IV, essentially decades-old designs with modern packaging. Meanwhile, SpaceX built their entire system from scratch, optimizing every component for reusability and rapid operations. We'll come back to this point later, but first we need to understand something that makes ULA's situation even more precarious. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how this technical gap reflects a fundamental crisis in traditional aerospace thinking. This leads to a remarkable discovery about what's really happening in American aerospace. We're watching two industries that barely speak the same language anymore. ULA represents everything traditional aerospace got right. Methodical development, near-perfect reliability, decades of successful government launches. Their safety record is genuinely impressive. But in today's space economy, being the most reliable horse-drawn carriage doesn't make you more advanced than the automobile. Here's the detail most people overlook. ULA's corporate culture still operates on Cold War-era timelines. A company director involved in Vulcan's development admitted they're trying to shift toward more flexibility, including brainstorming sessions and frequent testing. But compare this glacial pace to SpaceX's approach. They can design, build, test, fail, learn, and iterate within weeks. Why would SpaceX accept this risk? Because they understand that in rapidly evolving markets, the biggest risk is moving too slowly. Every SpaceX launch generates operational data, cost efficiencies, and competitive advantages. Their 2025 launch cadence, multiple Falcon 9 missions per week, demonstrates capabilities impossible with expendable rockets. And this is where things get interesting. The speed difference creates compounding advantages. 
While ULA spent over a decade developing Vulcan without achieving reusability, SpaceX has moved beyond basic recovery to planning fully reusable spacecraft with Starship. The gap isn't just technical, it's accelerating. But there's something deeper happening that reveals why ULA's claim seems so tone-deaf to industry insiders. The competitive landscape has fundamentally shifted. Blue Origin's New Glenn, Rocket Lab's Neutron, even China's private space companies. Everyone is designing for reusability from day one. ULA's most advanced rocket lacks the basic capability that defines modern spaceflight. Here's what's truly remarkable. SpaceX's cost advantages from reusability allow them to underbid traditional providers while maintaining higher margins. This creates a cycle where they can invest more in R&D while competitors struggle to match prices. ULA finds themselves trapped. They can't compete on cost, can't match operational tempo, and can't claim technological leadership. The August 22nd Starlink launch perfectly illustrates this reality. SpaceX deployed 24 satellites using a proven, reusable system that's flown dozens of times. Meanwhile, ULA celebrated their third Vulcan flight as a major milestone. The contrast couldn't be starker. One company treating complex missions as routine operations, the other still proving basic functionality. And here's why this changes everything. We're not just seeing a technology transition, but a complete restructuring of space industry economics and capabilities. And this is where the story reaches its climax. Because what looks like a future competition is actually a present reality that ULA is struggling to accept. SpaceX's Starship test flight, scheduled for August 24, 2025, represents more than another prototype launch. Despite previous explosions, each test moves closer to a fully reusable super heavy lift vehicle that makes current rockets look like toys. The stakes are enormous. NASA's Artemis three moon landing in 2027 and potential Mars missions in 2026 depend on this technology succeeding. But here's what few people realize about why this matters so much. Starship isn't just bigger than Vulcan. It's designed around completely different assumptions about how space access should work. While ULA optimizes for occasional high-value launches, SpaceX is building infrastructure for high-frequency space operations. What happens if Starship succeeds? The August 21st Space Force mission already demonstrated reusable spacecraft for long-duration military operations. Now imagine that capability scaled up by orders of magnitude. Space manufacturing, asteroid mining, Mars colonization shift from science fiction to business planning. Meanwhile, ULA's roadmap focuses on incremental improvements to proven systems. Their ACE's upper stage remains experimental after years of development. Engine recovery stays conceptual, while SpaceX prepares to catch entire rockets with mechanical arms. The gap isn't just technical anymore. It's philosophical. And here's what's truly noteworthy about the industry's response to ULA's claim. The collective eye-rolling wasn't just about current capabilities, but about understanding where the trajectory leads. Traditional aerospace's emphasis on extensive ground testing and conservative design margins becomes a liability when competitors can flight test actual hardware more rapidly and cheaply. The military and commercial customers are voting with their contracts. Space now launches everything from internet satellites to classified military payloads, demonstrating versatility that single-purpose rockets can't match. Even ULA's traditional government customer base is diversifying their launch providers. But there's one final twist that makes ULA's situation even more precarious. Environmental and regulatory challenges that favor established, proven systems might actually accelerate the shift toward reusability. Why? Because reusable rockets require fewer launches to deliver the same payload capacity, reducing environmental impact permission. When Elon Musk responded to ULA's most advanced claim, with just a laughing emoji, he wasn't being arrogant. He was pointing to a reality already visible in launch manifests, cost comparisons, and technological capabilities. The humiliation wasn't in the response, but in making a claim so disconnected from observable facts. The future of American space dominance won't be determined by marketing statements or corporate heritage, but by who can deliver the capabilities that matter in an increasingly competitive space economy. And based on current evidence, 
That future is being written not in boardrooms, but on launch pads where rockets land themselves, get refurbished, and fly again, while their competitors are still explaining why that's impossible. This is exactly why that single laughing emoji from Elon Musk cut so deep. It wasn't mockery, it was recognition that ULA is fighting yesterday's war, while the future of spaceflight is already being written. What this means is we're witnessing the final chapter of expendable rocketry as a competitive technology. When your most advanced system lacks the fundamental capability that every next generation rocket is designed around, you're not leading, you're becoming obsolete. The bigger picture here connects directly to humanity's expansion into space. Mars missions, lunar bases, asteroid mining, None of these become economically viable with rockets you throw away after every use. SpaceX isn't just winning a corporate rivalry, they're building the infrastructure that makes our multi-planetary future possible. And this is just the beginning. Starship's August 24th test could prove orbital refueling works. Blue Origin's new Glenn aims for first flight later this year. Even traditional players like Boeing are scrambling to add reusability to their designs. The next two years will determine whether companies like ULA adapt or become historical footnotes. How do you think established aerospace giants can compete with this new generation of space companies? Can traditional reliability advantages overcome the economics of reusability? This is Space Corps, and we dive deep into the breakthroughs reshaping our path to the stars. If you want more analysis on where space technology is really heading, you know what to do because the most advanced rockets aren't the ones making the boldest claims. They're the ones landing themselves and flying again. On August 6, China successfully tested their Lanyua Lunar Lander, the spacecraft designed to carry Chinese astronauts to the moon by 2030. This isn't just another milestone. It's accelerating the new space race faster than anyone expected. But here's what caught everyone off guard. Elon Musk's immediate response wasn't about the moon at all. Instead, SpaceX just announced their first Mars customer and revealed timeline details that completely shift the competition. What's really behind this strategic pivot and why might skipping the moon race actually be the smartest move? Let's dive right in. China's August 6 lunar lander test didn't just demonstrate capability, it shattered every timeline prediction Western space agencies had been working with. The Lanua lander demonstration took place on an elaborate ground-based structure that most observers initially dismissed as another publicity stunt. But the engineering details reveal something far more sophisticated and concerning for American space dominance. The test setup itself tells a remarkable story. Picture a framework of towering steel columns supporting a massive red ring at its center, with precision cables extending down to secure the lander. This wasn't just a simple engine test. It was a complete operational rehearsal designed to simulate lunar gravity conditions with unprecedented accuracy. Every detail had been carefully engineered to replicate the exact conditions Chinese astronauts will face on the lunar surface by 2030. Here's what few people realize about the technical sophistication on display. When the Lanua fired its engines, it emitted a distinct plume of yellow-brown exhaust, immediately signaling to experts that China had chosen hypergolic propellants. Think of these as the Formula One fuel of space exploration. Incredibly reliable because they ignite instantly on contact, but extremely toxic and dangerous to handle. This choice reveals China's absolute prioritization of mission success over operational convenience, a philosophy that has Western engineers genuinely worried. The test sequence included firing two large main thrusters, along with smaller side-mounted thrusters, perfectly mimicking both the powered descent to the moon's surface and the subsequent ascent back into orbit. But here's the detail that has NASA officials losing sleep. This wasn't just engine testing. The China National Space Administration simultaneously released detailed computer-generated animations showing the lander's orbital approach, powered descent, touchdown, surface operations, and ascent, matching exactly what was demonstrated during the ground test. And here's what's truly noteworthy about the engineering approach. 
The Lanua features a horizontal configuration with four robust fixed landing legs specifically designed for stability on the moon's uneven terrain. While SpaceX has chosen a towering vertical Starship approach that's more ambitious but riskier, China has opted for a proven conservative design philosophy reminiscent of Apollo's lunar module. But enhanced with 50 years of technological advancement, the lander operates as part of a sophisticated three-element architecture that includes China's new Long March 10 rocket and the Mengzhou crew spacecraft. The mission plan calls for two precise Long March 10 launches, the first carrying the crew aboard Mengzhou into lunar orbit, the second delivering the Lanua lander to await their arrival. This dual launch approach might seem less impressive than SpaceX's single vehicle Starship HLS system, but here's what most people overlook. It's actually more reliable and less prone to catastrophic single point failures. Recent leaked images have revealed what appears to be a full-scale Long March 10 booster ready for static fire testing, featuring an impressive 21YF 100K engines in the first stage, seven in the central core, and seven in each of the two side boosters. This configuration suggests China's heavy lift capability isn't just being developed. It's nearing operational status months ahead of Western intelligence estimates. But this technical achievement is just the surface. What's really surprising is how SpaceX's leadership reacted to this demonstration and why their response might be the most audacious gamble in space exploration history. When news of China's successful lander test reached SpaceX headquarters, Elon Musk's response wasn't what anyone expected. Instead of announcing accelerated lunar timelines or enhanced Starship capabilities, SpaceX made a move that left the entire space industry scrambling to understand the implications. Within days of China's demonstration, Gwyn Shotwell posted a statement that would reshape the entire space race. Get on board. We are going to Mars. SpaceX is now offering Starship services to the Red Planet. This wasn't just a social media announcement. It was a declaration of strategic warfare. While China focused on perfecting lunar landing technology, SpaceX was quietly pivoting to an entirely different battlefield. The timing was no coincidence. Industry insiders reveal that SpaceX had been monitoring China